So, um, I finally beat the game, um, which on its own is amazing. Uh, if you followed my streams throughout this whole playthrough, um, I had some quite some challenges because um, I did not play like most people play. I played, um, I didn't use all my tools, like the meat hook, I didn't really use it that much, which could have probably helped me along the way. Um, but hey, you each play, you know, we're each to their own. So let's start with the general game itself. Um, once again, you're playing the Doom Destroyer. You're playing the um, the one I'll be all kill everything. Um, there's a bit of a story, but again, there's a lot of a lot of lore in this particular version of the game. But if you don't care for it, who cares? It's fun. It's good to read and to understand and collect stuff along the way, but it's not really uh, important to the game, really. Um, if you just want to play through the levels, you just play through the levels. Um, I the graphics for this game are phenomenal. Um, the sound, the soundtrack, everything in terms of the actual lore and everything about the game is phenomenal. Now, keep in mind, I'm only going to be reviewing the campaign. I didn't play the multiplayer. I'm not a big multiplayer guy. Um, I may try it just to try it out, but I'm not a multiplayer guy, so I don't know how it's going to work out or not. Um, the story, as I said, I mean, it takes second fiddle to whatever the action is in the game. So that... that and, and I, the way that I described it earlier um, as well is it's an 80s action f flick where the story takes a back burner and, and the action takes precedence. That's basically it. Um, it's a lot more difficult than Doom 2016. Doom 2016, you're able, it, it felt like you went from one room to the next to advance the storyline. I felt there was less, I, again, I haven't played it since I came out, so I don't remember, but I, it felt like there were less puzzles. There were puzzles, but there were less than this time. Um, a lot of, I don't know how people the first time around finished it in 10 hours, 12 hours. It took me 22. Um, I think that's going to be my final tally when I'm done. It's going to be roughly 22, which, you know, um... I got stuck in a lot of places where I shouldn't have have been have been, um, and when one of the more, um, you know, there's a plot up a part about I don't know a quarter of the game in, where you're on this icy island or whatever, and I got stuck in an area, and you have to proactively think to jump behind, a like behind a a, a cliff. Um, so that you can jump on another platform like really it was not evident i must have got stuck there for a good half an hour 45 minutes honestly t honest to god i did not know where to go and there was a guy on my stream i think it was switchy who uh told me it's not what i think it is and i'm like what um and i i went around the other side i went through you know i went back in maybe i missed an exit or something or i missed a switch no I just didn't go in the right area and it just looks like I would have jumped in the the void but once you start jumping you see that there's a platform and then you can dash in the air um, stuff like that like there's a few places where it wasn't super clear um, where you had to go now some people didn't have any problems with that um, I, I had challenging parts in some of the puzzles uh, sometimes the answer was right in front of me and I made it more complicated than it had to be that the onus is on me for that um, it's not the game's fault, but still, there's areas where I had trouble. Um, the enemy selection is really cool. Um, a lot of the enemies remind you of the original game, a lot more than Doom 2016 did, at least for me. Uh, you have the, sol the, 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 the demon soldiers uh, that look really pretty damn good, um, if, you, <laughs> if I ask them myself. The Kaku demons were cool. Um, everything about the game, the, the, the character models were cool. The only enemy that I find the difficulty was ramped up for no Hey, hey real life. Thank you for the host. Woohoo. Um, um, and 
Uh, so you just, you guys just caught me at the last part of my, of my, uh, of the game. I just finished Doom Eternal, so I'm giving my a little bit of my, my spiel about the the review of the game without re revealing too much of the game. Obviously, for those who haven't played it. Uh, but thank you very much for the host, Real Life. Really appreciate it. You're awesome. Um, yeah, so the, the, the characters are, are really, really done well. Um, from, you know, the, 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 the zombies to the zombie soldiers or demon soldiers all the way up to the Kaku demon and the arch vile and so on. That was really freaking awesome. The one enemy that no matter where I was, um, it was a challenge, even after I kind of understood how to beat him, uh, is the Marauder. Um, for some reason, the level of difficulty for that particular... You can throw anything at me in the game. I was, I was fine with it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't... I did not like... The Marauder, and I, I, from what I read online, I'm not the only one that didn't like him. Um, he is abnormally difficult if you have more than one enemy on the screen. So the first time you meet him, you meet him alone in a room, which is actually not too bad. I thought it was difficult at the beginning. That had nothing to do with what it had at the end. Um, it's it, He comes in ever so often. Um, I'm happy he did not show up to the last fight thank the lord um but other than him i think the difficulty of the the character uh, of the enemies are, are pretty pretty well it's what you would expect um you know and it does punish you this one punishes you a lot more for making the wrong decisions in a fight uh, Doom 2016, it felt like you were able to, um, you were able to get a, get out of situations if you kind of made the wrong choice, like you, you took the wrong weapon or you didn't do something properly. This time around, it really looks like they punish you for not doing the right thing. Um, and, and that's, that makes it a very very challenging and from the beginning to as you're progressing you know if you're going to play the game for the first time every fight that you fight is the hardest fight at that time but if you go like later on and you look back and you're gonna be like oh man that was so easy how the hell did i screw that up it's so like really really good uh in, in that way um it's very challenging however when you do finish an area a level of some sort uh, there's satisfaction in that. You feel like you've really succumbed like <laughs> hell uh, to get to where you are. So from that perspective, and some of them, like I played the game on easy. I have no qualms about it. Anybody can give me, <laughs> give me poop. Um, I, because usually the way I play is the first time that I play it, I play it as, um, easy so i get the story and i get to understand how it works and then when i go back i play at a harder difficulty and i got a little bit scared when i start i heard um lazy game reviews where he had reached a certain area where he had to lower the difficulty because he couldn't get through an area because uh, i think he, he didn't have it on the hardest one but he had it right below and he couldn't he couldn't get it um, so I was really scared. So I, I took it all the way down to, and even if you go all the way to the easiest one, don't think it's going to be a walk in the park. Um, it's a, it's a pretty challenging game. It's built that way. Um, some people had ease, you know, on it, uh, were, were, had an easier time to beat the game. Um, for me, I, it was challenging, um. I'm a first-person shooter kind of guy, but I'm not. I ra if it was only the fight scenes, like only the scenes where I, I was able to to beat everyone, I'd be fine. Some of the platforming got to me because sometimes you didn't know where the hell you were going. So that's fine. The one thing I find also makes the the game a little bit more difficult 
you have the idea of lives, which is fine. Uh, they're usually secrets or whatever. So you, you get yourself some lives. Uh, for most people, I'm assuming um, once you pick a few lives, you'll be fine for the game. Uh, for I used to run through lives like it was nobody's business. Um, but if you don't have a life, let's say, to... So basically what a life does is if you die in a certain battle, you don't have to restart from a pre-saved load checkpoint. point. You can just continue the game. You have like a few seconds where everything is gray. And then you just continue playing. Now... What I would have really liked is a safe state. Uh, the original game had that, and I don't know why they, they, they have a knack for wanting to go back to times where we had checkpoints. It makes the game arbitrarily hard. Uh, there's parts where there's multiple elements to a fight. So you have like one fight, and then there's another surge and a third surge. I would have loved to save at certain points, and you can't. Now, I will say that the checkpoints are pretty often. Like, there's there's no point where you're going to go back to, like, a full level or anything, um, which is, is great. But I do not... Um, I don't understand in today's day and age that where we can have save states, and, and it's, it's a shame. Um, the one thing... Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, the the items in the game. So, compared to twenty six Doom twenty sixteen, there's a lot more lore around it. So there's a lot more collection the items you can collect and read. Um, one of the reasons why it took me longer to play the game as well is because I actually like to now I didn't get everything, but I like I got a lot of them. I was trying to get them as much as I could. Um, the advantage of going back to play them, play it now, um, I have the items. I can go back to certain levels and pick up what I missed, which is actually really cool. Um, but the one thing I really loved was the items. So you had, you were able to read certain things, um, you know, uh, transcripts and so on, or excerpts from this book. Um, you were able to get some uh, lives, which is good. But what I really liked about the secrets were the fact that you were able to get the the way you obtain cheats. It's not the way that you're accustomed to, like back in the day where you entered a command line and you were fine. You have to actually earn them and you have to collect them during the game. Now, I think there's like 10, 10 cheats you can get. Uh, I got the two that I really want, like all the weapons. And what's the advantage is that when you replay a certain level, you can actually load that particular level with that cheat. So you're able to get through it, and there's no issue. Um, so that's that's pretty cool, and that's pretty awesome. Um, and it's always fun to find, like they were marked. It it was a good balance between. Um, it was a good balance between. Um, finding the secret, with the reward, and having it on the map. Like, the original game didn't really have many things on the map. They had indications, or you were able to kind of deduce. But it didn't flat out say this was a secret. Here, especially if you have the map, it actually tells you, hey, there's a question mark over here. You can actually get there. Now, how you get there is not explicitly told to you. But at least it tells you, hey, there's a secret over there. So it makes it easier for you to actually find these things. Um... And it's very satisfying to find a toy or to find a cheat or to find a lot of different things. That's pretty cool. The one thing I also really liked is the Fortress of Doom. Um, unlike the last game where you kind of jump in, you don't really have a place called home. Here you do. You have a spaceship called the Fortress of Doom uh, that looks over the earth. And uh, you can have memorabilia that's there. All your guns are hanging. Uh, you have a, a, a rack for your toys. You have a rack for... Um, uh, your stuff and during the game when you're collecting items like uh, albums for example uh, you have different theme songs for different di different games um, you can actually they're hung on the wall and you can actually play them so when you're on your ship or when you're on the fortress of doom you can actually play those soundtracks you have the original doom one doom two quake quake two quake arena wolfenstein um the soundtracks go really above and beyond, which is really cool. Another thing that a lot of people might not know, um, 
on your computer on the in your fortress of for, uh, of doom. I don't know why I see fortress of <laughs> fortitude. I don't know. You have your PC in there, and on your PC there's there's two two programs that are there. One is downloading completely, and one is password protected. The one that's downloading, I'm pretty sure if I go and see my computer now, I can play Doom 1. Uh, and if I go to the second one, you have to find a password for it, which I, the password is in the bookcase. Actually.